here now exclusively tonight, Rudy Giuliani. Mayor, good to see you tonight. Thank How you for you, being here. I'm doing well. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in. Um, you know, it's interesting when you look at the argument because the, the word patriotism was used over and over and over again ever since Mueller finished talking. Yeah. Uh, it's become a major theme in the Democrats' language. Yeah, it's, it's not going to not going to work any better than Mueller worked for them. I mean, everyone knows what happened to them the other day. Mueller got knocked out, largely because there's no case. I mean, there, there's a lot of attacks on Bob, and he wasn't smart, and he didn't pay attention. Maybe, maybe true, but there's a real problem. You can only go so far in creating a phony case. And Bob ultimately does have integrity. He was asleep at the switch. The inmates took over the asylum, like Weissman, and did all kinds of horrible things, trampling on people's rights which is the uncharacteristic of Bob Mueller, by the way, which always made me wonder, is he in charge of this thing? And the reality is that the Democrats are now making total clowns out of themselves. Um, it's not about patriotism. It's about, do you have any sense of decency? I mean, this is over. They, they, couldn't, they, they couldn't find collusion. They couldn't find obstruction in any sensible way. I mean, he didn't obstruct anything. There was no underlying crime. There isn't a seasoned prosecutor in the country that would bring a case like that, except laugh at it. So now they're trying to do, well, he must have done something wrong, or it wasn't presented correctly, or if Andrew Weissman couldn't get three people to lie about Donald Trump, one of them that he put in solitary confinement, and I would say came pretty close to torturing Manafort, put the guy in solitary confinement, bring him back nine times, tell him what to say. Yeah. If he says it, he gets out of solitary confinement. Wow. That's what we call suborning perjury. If he couldn't do it, believe me, these two guys uh, uh, who are trying to Nadler and Schiff, who are not operating really with the same po uh, mental power as Weissman. Weissman is much brighter than they are if he, and much more malicious in some ways. If he couldn't do it, they're not, they're not going to do it. So one of the interesting things that happened in the hearing in the questioning side was that I think a lot of America started to hear things that they had never heard before. Um, we've covered both sides of this story throughout the case of, of the entire thing that, you know, the president's side feels that there was some kind of potentially a setup. Papadopoulos, we've had him on the show. He's talked about what he believes happened to him. But, but listen to Devin Nunes as he went through this line of questioning that, you know, I watched some of the other channels coverage and it was like they'd never heard of any of these people. Watch it. <laughs> Can you repeat the question? Whether or not uh, you uh, interviewed Stephen Schrage, who organized the Cambridge. Okay, I'm, in those areas, I am going to uh, stay away from. So Downer conveys a rumor he supposedly heard about a conversation between Papadopoulos and Joseph Mifsud. James Comey has publicly called Mifsud a Russian agent, yet your report does not refer to Mifsud as a Russian agent. I mean, literally, I heard people saying, what, who was he talking about? What is he talking about? So my question for you is, as the president's attorney, what is the next step in terms of shedding more light on what you believe is the other side of the story that, that should be pursued here? Well, the, uh, first of all, we're going to find out that Mifsud was operating for a uh, so-called friendly intelligence service, not Russia, that he was given the a information. Western, European, yeah, yeah, yeah. British intelligence. And that he was given the information to feed to Papadopoulos, which if you had any, any common sense or sense of honesty, you figured out. I mean, I knew that immediately. I've done lots of counterintelligence investigations. So is Mueller. It has well, all George the Papadopoulos said he thought it was The whole weird. scheme with Papadopoulos has all the earmarks of foreign counterintelligence. Dirty trick. Right, you've got a young guy who just joins the team. Not right? a genius to And suddenly that. people are calling him, reaching out to him and saying, you know, we'd like to meet with they you in London. They put the guy low we'd down like on the campaign and then they bring a beautiful woman in to try to seduce yeah. him. Yeah. I mean, this is out of a cheap novel. And I can, I can speculate but can't tell you who I think is doing it, but got to be somebody who's got a real big intelligence background. And somebody like, who's willing to any, carry any, out Any, any it, names come to mind? Well, a couple come to mind, but I don't want to accuse anybody without having the facts. Let's see what, let's see what happens. Comey's right in the middle of it. I mean, Comey, Comey's got to be the center of this investigation. Now, he's probably not where it stops. It probably goes higher. But Comey signed an affidavit that is patently false about Steele. Uh, he said on the top of the affidavit, verified. Four months later, he told the president it was unverified. You can't, can't be unverified four months later if it's verified yeah. four months earlier. So this guy is headed for big trouble. Uh, let's see if he talks. And let's see if McCabe yeah. talks. And I don't know, Peter Strzok, you think maybe he's a candidate for for giving state's evidence? He doesn't look like the strongest character to me. We will be watching. Uh, Mayor Giuliani, always good to see you. Uh, thank you so much for coming good. in tonight, sir. Good. We'll see you soon.